Welcome to the Hazel Park City Council meeting, September 24, 2024. Roll call, please. Mayor Webb. Here. Mayor Sullivan. Here. Council Member Londo. Here. Council Member Here. Council Member Washington. Here. Here. Approval of the agenda. Move approval of the agenda as presented. I'll second. A discussion, deletions, additions. Hearing none, dissension, we have an agenda. Special presentation for the National Recovery Month. Mr. Klobuchar. National Recovery Month, September 2024, whereas according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, in 2022, 17.3% of Americans, or 48.7 million people, 12 years or older, were classified as having a substance use disorder in the past year, including 29.5 million people who were classified as having an alcohol use disorder, and 27.2 million people who were classified as having a drug use disorder, and Whereas, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, over 107,000 overdose deaths occurred in the United States in 2023, a 3% decrease from 2022. And whereas, substance use recovery is important for individual well-being and vitality, as well as for families, friends, communities, and businesses. And whereas, OCHN continues to educate and raise awareness of the risks potential harm associated with prescription drug misuse and whereas stigma and stereotypes associated with substance use disorders often keep people from seeking treatment that could improve their quality of life and whereas substance use disorders occur when the recurrent use of alcohol and or other drugs cause clinically or functionally significant impairments such as health problems disability and failure to meet major responsibilities at work school or home and whereas Substance use disorder recovery is a journey of healing and transformation, enabling people to live in a community of their choice while striving to achieve their full potential. And whereas, substance use disorder recovery benefits individuals with substance use disorders by focusing on their abilities to live, work, learn, and fully participate and contribute to society and enriches the community culture. And now therefore be it resolved that Oakland County Community Health Network uh, they recognize September as 2024 as National Recovery Month, and the city of Hazel Park uh, joins OCHN in calling upon individuals, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, faith-based organizations, and schools to recommit our state to increasing awareness and understanding of substance abuse and the need for appropriate and accessible services to promote recovery. Thank you. you can go on. National Suicide Prevention Month. Let me read that one. You can read that one. If you want or I can read Whereas September is known as National Prevention, Suicide Prevention Month and is intended to help raise awareness surrounding suicide prevention and resources available in the community. And whereas World Suicide Prevention Day is observed each year on September 10th. And whereas suicidal thoughts can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, race, orientation, income level, religion, or background and Whereas, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, more than 48,000 people die from suicide in, in 2021. And whereas in 2021, suicide was among the top nine leading causes of death for people ages 10 through 64. And the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 through 14 and 20 through 34. And whereas organizations like the National Alliance on Mental Illness and, Na and National Suicide Prevention Lifeline 988 work to help individuals in crises and provide resources to shed light on the highly stigmatized topic. And whereas every member of our community should understand and throughout life struggles, we all need to the occasional reminder that we are all silently fighting our own battles. And whereas Oakland County Community Health Network 
is committed to being a suicide, a zero suicide organization and cultivate a network of providers who are engaged in the zero suicide philosophy. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Oakland County Health Network hereby recognizes September 2024 as National Suicide Prevention Month, calls upon our individuals, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, faith-based organizations, schools, and recommit our state to increase awareness and understanding of suicide prevention and the need for appropriate accessibility services and assist individuals in crisis. Anyone want to take the next one? I can do it. Go ahead. All right, City of Hazel Park proclamation naming September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month, whereas his Michigan's Hispanic and Lat Latinx population has grown from 2010 to 2020, according to the Census Bureau. Figures from the 2020 census show that the 564, 400, Oh, sorry, 564,422 Hispanic and Latinx residents in Michigan make up 5.6% of Michigan's state population, up from 4.4% in 2010. And whereas between 2010 and 2020, Hispanic Americans contributed to over 66% of the population growth in Michigan, and whereas with over 60 million Hispanic Americans residing in the United States. Hispanic Americans make up the largest minority group in the nation and have significantly contributed to our government, culture, and economy over generations. And whereas Hispanic Americans have made many important advances in areas of law, religion, agriculture, art, music, education, technology, architecture, cuisine, theater, and exploration. And whereas, according to the U.S. Census, Hispanic males have the highest labor force participating in the state of Michigan, equal to 75%. And whereas, Hispanic Americans have provided Michigan and the United States with unique social and cultural influences, fundamentally enriching the extraordinary character of our state and nation, and whereas Michigan is fortunate to count among its population a large number of residents of Spanish and Latin American descent who grow businesses, offer innovative ideas, strengthen our economy, create jobs, and contribute to our daily lives. And whereas during the mo this month, Michigan's Hispanic American community will celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month through a series of special events featuring Hispanic history, food, dance, and art, celebrating the rich tradition and many contributions this community has made to the state of Michigan. And whereas we appreciate and honor the countless achievements of Hispanic Americans and continue our efforts to ensure the city of Hazel Park is a welcoming, inclusive place that provides just and equal opportunities for all. Now, therefore, bear it be there it be known that I, well, that, that Mayor Michael Mayor Webb, Mike. sorry, <laughs> do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Hazel Park. And I so do. <laughs> Takes us to civic announcements. I have a couple here. Kathy Hall. Hi, my name is Kathleen Hall. I live at 1141 East Melton. I'm here on behalf of St. Justin St. Mary Magdalene Parish. We're having our semi-annual uh, rummage and bake sale. It's at the St. Justin's campus on 1600 East Evelyn. It's Friday, October 4th from 10 to 5, Saturday, October 5th, 10 to 5, and Sunday, October 6th, 10 to 1. There's special pricing on Sunday. There's uh, two rooms of furniture. There's all kinds of clothes for women, children, men. Um, there's also baked goods. Uh, glassware, housewares, uh, electronics. There's a raffle on Sunday. So we'd like to have, see everybody there and come find some treasures. So would you be able to put it on the community events? Okay, leave it here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you have it there, uh, have it. leave it up, lay it up there. With, uh, me or Melissa here, and we'll make sure we put that on your community uh, on Facebook and the, the newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. David Monastang. Close. Close. <laughs> you can correct me now. Slash your name and address for record, please. <laughs> I'm David Monastir. I live at 23744 Cousins Avenue. Um, since moving here in 2017, I've seen Hazel Park go crazy with Halloween displays. I make Halloween music and art, and I score music for uh, TV shows and movies. 
and I'm putting on the Haunted Hazel Park Halloween Art Fair. October 12th, it'll be at Green Acres Park, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's gonna feature a haunted trail for the kids, spooky face painting, and all artists will feature Halloween-inspired art. There will be Halloween-themed treats and concessions. This is gonna be an annual event I plan to grow every year, and I'd love the community to be involved, which is why I'm asking for volunteers. If anybody out there loves Halloween, please email hauntedhazelpark at gmail.com if you'd like to volunteer, and I'm excited to do it. Thank you. Dave, what's Dave. the date of Haunted Hazel Park again? What was that? What's the date? October 12th. Okay. Thank you. He has uh, flyers up there. That you might be seeing them in a bunch of stores and spirit Halloweens. Give, yeah. give uh, one of them the flyer, and we'll post it on the uh, website. Also, if you don't mind messaging the Arts Council Facebook, um, we can post on there as well with the request um, and the email for volunteers. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Shirley Drew. Hello. Hello. Um, I live at 1811 East Otis, and I don't usually come to these, but I have an issue with the sidewalks that were replaced. Okay. I had three replaced, two of which were fine, but it held a little bit of water, but the other two they put in is horrible. It's a monsoon now when it rains. So it just kind of lays there? Yeah, and it didn't even settle yet. And this is right after they did it. I've talked to Tom at DPW, and I'm not sure what's going on with him. He said he was going to check into it or whatever, but I got the bill. I only paid one. Paid for one, you know, out of the three. Because the other two I don't want to pay for because it didn't even settle yet, and it's bad. And I also have been contacted. I've called uh, Mr. Kopitcher. I left a message with you on September 7th to call me. I haven't heard from yet. I also sent a... Uh, I did not get that message, so... Oh, sorry. I talked to the lady that hands, you know... Here. I did not get that message, but you're here now. What is your address? 1811 East Otis. Okay. So is the, these are still holding water and they're mm -hmm. freezing? Yes. You had these poured, what, last year? No, you guys... Did, I, I mean, these were poured out. last year or the year before? When? Uh, in August, July, August. Oh, this year? Okay. Yeah, and it didn't even settle yet. Okay. You know, I mean, the, so the winter's going to be rough. And I don't want to pay for that. There was nothing wrong with the other ones. They were much better shaped than these, okay. holding less water and everything. So I don't know who else to go to. So, take so I fear I come out. here, you know... Let's see if we, we might have to just replace them. If they're yeah. holding water. Yeah. Do something, because it's, it's just ones. not right. You know, just... Oh, and I got a bill that I should not pay for, and, you know, I paid the one and took the 5% off. Shirley, did you put your phone number on the I might have. that you... Said? Whatever it says. No. I can do that, but, yep. yeah, if you guys could take care of her, let me know. Put your phone number on that, and I'll have somebody give you a call, okay? Okay, thank you. Announcements. Hmm? No, hang on. Just wait for her. So, okay. We can take a second. We all good, Shirley? So. Yes, and also I did do a complaint to Mr. Culpitcher, too, a written one. Where? And I never got back from that. Yes. Okay. I was. I did a formal complaint on your on the website. I never heard from that either. I well, I'm glad you brought it forth. So that was September seventh. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Locked. Thank you. Yeah, that got forwarded right. to town. Okay, any other civic announcements from the city council? Any? Any? Art fair went well. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have quorum, so I don't have numbers to bring um, because we had to reschedule uh, last month's uh, meeting. But yes, it was another successful art fair. We're super grateful for all of the residents who volunteered, all of the businesses that sponsored, um, and definitely for the general population that came out and supported our local artists. Um, we were we received we always send out a. Um, a summary after a survey for the artists so that we can better address any comments, concerns, questions they have for upcoming 
um, events, but uh, again, it was really, really well received, really well attended, and um, other than the hot weather, I think. I think um, it really was really better than some of the other ones. It was a great, it was a great event, and I'm really grateful that we get to host it every year. Thank you. So. I'll have better, I'll have numbers and stuff for us next meeting, um, actually. But our uh, our city, our uh, arts council meeting is October 14th. Um, we're still deciding on a location, so I'll get that posted soon. Thank you. Any other comments? Close the civic announcements. Public discussion. Charles Leslie. Oh, they have shirts. Hey, folks. Charles Lasse, um, 335 East Hayes. Um, I wrote on this sheet, Beautification Commission. Mm -hmm. But since you talked about Recovery Month, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about that. Um, I love that you read that and you acknowledge that. I want to bring it first person for a second. I'm a recovering addict. And on August 6th, I had three years clean. Congratulations. Congratulations. And <laughs> I want to not make this an invisible uh, venture. I want to be the face of recovery. I want to be a resource. Um, I will make this lighthearted and tell you that I'm allergic to more, right? Anything that made me feel good, I want more of. And you mentioned alcohol and drugs, um, but it's also eating and spending and gambling and sex and porn and all these other things that when we get more, we lot more and it's hard to stop. And um, so I just wanted to say that. Um, I, I'm a secretary at a meeting. I'm a treasurer at a meeting, and I also hold meetings uh, with inmates at Oak Oakland County Jail once a, once a week. I'm very proud of my work and my, my, uh, my success in recovery after struggling for almost 30 years. All right, so next, uh, Beautification Commission. Um, if I could have these lovely commissioners come up. We want to model our new t-shirts. I have our, um, our new vision and mission uh, to distribute for you folks. We are reorganized and revitalized. Um, we also have applications in for two new commissioners, Joe and Alyssa. And I'm hoping you have record of those applications mm -hmm. at this point and that you can get that on the agenda for maybe the next council meeting. We would really need some uh, additional capacity. Um, and yeah, I'm just really proud of how far we've come so quickly. And uh, we, as you can see, our vision and mission, uh, we have a purpose and uh, we are planning to move forward. Some of this is already in play with uh, the community garden, the, the garden club, um, the and work at Kennedy Park. We did a cleanup this uh, last Sunday. We just went from the Kroger driveway on the easement across in front of the library, the Hazel Park sign. In 45 minutes, we got 15 gallons of trash. And um, community support has been wonderful. And we're hoping to uh, mobilize more folks in the future for those. And that's a subcommittee project that Gavin is spearheading. Um, so I want to make ourselves available for any questions you may have, any input or feedback. Oh, it sounds like you're doing a wonderful job. We appreciate it. We greatly do. And I'm sure the residents will as well. Thank, thank, you, thank you very you. much. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. And uh, Charles, I look forward to meeting with you and Tanya uh, as soon as we can get that scheduled with uh, some of the department heads that are relevant to what you're doing here. So that we can facilitate even better cooperation. Gavin, thank you for organizing the cleanup. Thank you for understanding what I asked you to do and, and following that because it's really important. We, are, we do have uh, uh, an enforcement uh, initiative with those businesses and sure. they need to step up and become the heroes of their own story in that but you guys all did a fantastic job so thank you on behalf of the residents of the city of Hazel Park. Thank you. Sir. Good, thank you. Guys. good work. The shirts look good. Thanks. And uh, I emailed Linda yesterday uh, prompting her again to see if we can get that meeting yeah. set. She's, she's been out ill so hopefully she'll be back uh, okay. tomorrow. I'm all right great. Take care of thank, you. thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, Tiffany Perkins, Puppy Store Band. Tiffany Perkins, Royal Oak. Um, I want to share that September is also Puppy Mill, Puppy Mill Awareness Month. Um, puppy mills are mass breeding operations with no federal requirement to provide sustainable vet care or enrichment. Hoarding dogs in deteriorating um, wire-bottomed crates that permit only enough room to stand up and lay down in, um, in their own feces and urine for years. Passing a puppy store ban eliminates our contribution to their suffering and protects residents from parasitic predatory lending scams with inflated interest rates and costly vet bills after purchasing a poorly bred dog from a puppy store. These unhealthy dogs are often surrendered to our local shelters or pass away within their first year of life. Our taxpayer dollars are actively paying for massive euthanasia rates in our local shelters. From one local shelter, uh, year to date, 1,700 dogs were euthanized for humane space. On average, cost from intake to euthanasia is $150 per dog. Um, this one shelter is projecting to uh, to cost taxpayers $364,000 just to put these dogs to sleep. All animals in our community deserve dignity, and our consumers that live in this community be protected from the deceptive scam puppy stores. Um, this preventative ordinance would do just that for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Flores. Um, buenas noches. Good evening. My name is uh, Mike Flores, and I uh, live on Manatee Avenue. Um, I stand before you today to recognize Hispanic Heritage Month and to once again call on this body to support a ceasefire resolution that reflects our Hazel Park values. As Latinos, our history is deeply connected to the Palestinian suffrage and other suffrages across the world. We, have, we share a common story of colonialism, displacement, and genocide. Histories of people stripped from their lands, cultures erased, and identities marginalized. Much like Palestinians today, many of our families have endured the trauma of being forcibly uprooted, denied our right to self-determination, and treated as second-class citizens in our own lands and foreign lands. In fact, my own family story is a reflection of this shared experience. My father, a Salvadorian refugee, was forced to flee his homeland, ironically, due to U.S. foreign policies and weapons supplied by the IDF to support military regimes in Central America. Those regimes displace countless families across El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, and beyond. My mother's family, too, came to this country from Nicaragua under diplomatic privileges, escaping the violence that many faced. This is not just my family's story. It is a story of millions of people in the U.S. displaced from Latin America, victims of wars and dictatorship that were often fueled by foreign powers and arms, much like Palestinians face today. From Guatemala to Honduras, Chile to El Salvador, we know what it feels like to be caught in the crossfires of global powers that treat our lives as disposable. And today, we see the same brutality in Palestine, where families are torn apart, families' homes are demolished, and generations are traumatized by an endless cycle of war. This is why I, and many others, will continue to come back and demand for peace, diplomacy, and, su and support for a ceasefire. Our shared stories of colonialism and displacement bind us together, and we know that if we do not speak from our positions of privilege, if I don't speak from my position of privilege. We are complicit in the very systems of oppression that have harmed our own communities for generations. As we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, let us also remember the words of other powerful movements from the LGBTQ plus movement. There is no pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. From the women's movement, speak your mind, even if your voice shakes. And from the black freedom movement and the words of John Lewis, get in good trouble, necessary trouble, and help redeem the soul of America. Today I speak my mind, my voice may shake, but I will continue to call for justice, to demand a ceasefire for peace, and to fight for the liberation of all people. To conclude, I thank this body for recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month, and I ask this body, when will you bring forward a ceasefire resolution that reflects the values of Hazel Park? Thank you.
Hank Kennedy. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Hank Kennedy. I live at 300 East Harry Avenue. I was reminded of the great polemicist George Orwell this week by the maddening argument advanced and made by Israeli spokespeople that Israel's bombing of Lebanon was de-escalation through escalation. Orwell wrote in 1946, in our time, political speech and writing are largely the defense of the indefensible. Things like the continuance of British rule in India, the Russian purges and deportations, the dropping of the atom bombs on Japan can indeed be defended, but only by arguments which are too brutal for most people to face and which do not square with the professed aims of political parties. Thus, political language has to consist largely of euphemism, question begging, and sheer cloudy vagueness. The politicians of our time do much the same. They cannot admit the truth of the war crimes, the crimes against humanity perpetuated in Gaza. They cannot say that for them, the oppression of the Palestinians is an acceptable price to pay for propping up a friendly government and not coincidentally a major buyer of American arms. As an example, I give an email I received from Michigan Senator Gary Peters. I bring up Peters for a couple reasons. One, he is an example of this problem with the English language, and two, it is proof that those of us who care about Palestine do not only beseech our city councils. Peters laments the vicious, unprovoked terrorist attacks that killed Israelis, but says that Gazan civilians have died as a, quote, result of the conflict and a lack of access to basic resources. Note the switch from active to passive voice. Israelis are killed, Gazans simply die. Someone should tell the senator that the tens of thousands who have been killed, most of them women and children, have been killed by missiles, rockets, bullets, and bombs stamped made in USA. If you oppose what's being done with our money and our names, Politicians like our state attorney general call you far left, an extremist, or an anti-Semite. Somehow the politicians who joke about dropping a nuclear bomb on Gaza and mock thousands of dead Palestinians never get called what they are, which is extremists and anti-Arab racists. It's time for this council to decide if it is for truth, justice, and peace, or will it join the many politicians in the House the Senate, the White House, and in Lansing in mangling language and truth to prosecute a bloodbath. Please speak out against the waste of labor, of material, and of human life and pass a ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Al Johnson. Mal Johnson, 50 Orchard Avenue. We are less than two weeks away from the one year mark of the current genocide in Gaza. While the murdering, starvation, and development and spread of polio and other diseases continue, Israel has not only started a genocide campaign in the West Bank, but within the last week has been exploding pagers and walking talkies and preemptively bombing Lebanon. All this is being done regardless of the UN or ICJ rulings, simply because Israel has immunity. And why does Israel have immunity? because of the unwavering support of the U.S. government at all levels. During our current election, those unhappy with the presidential race are being reminded it's all about local government, and that's where the most important decisions preside. While all of this is happening, you continue to sit here and not say a word. Each and every one of you has a moral responsibility to use your position and connections to influence state-level politicians to stand up against Israel, to demand not only a ceasefire, but an end to all aid to Israel and divestment from companies who invest in or support Israel. Israel cannot continue without any consequences. And I know you will all... Will you all will whine and say that you don't have the power and it's not the place for you to speak on international matters. We all know that's a lie. My first public comment here was about how it only took you four days to make a public statement on support for Ukraine. You also had Haley Stevens come to the Hazel Park Pride flag ceremony. You are able to speak on international matters and you do have direct connections to state level politicians. So it's not that you can't, it's that you don't want to. 
Locals had already been asking you desperately to call for a ceasefire for months when you hosted Haley Stevens here. Stevens, someone who willingly and gratefully attended a genocidal war crime maniac speech to Congress. You know who you are in bed with. Years down the road, Hazel Park will probably do some absurd resolution, creating a Palestinian Remembrance Day to make yourselves look good. But it will only be after Palestine is gone. It will be after you got what you wanted. Then and only then will you actually say anything because politicians, even on the local level, do things out of, don't do things out of their heart. They only do things to make them look good. That's what you have all taught me. It is clear that you are all either just clear supporters of Israel and genocide or complete cowards, maybe a little bit of both. And please don't get it twisted. Being critical of Israel is not being anti-Semitic. Lastly, on a different note, I've noticed the you belong here signs in Hazel Park. Those banners are absurd. It is beyond clear that Hazel Park only cares about you if you spend money here and you stay silent. Sitting here watching these meetings or watching back the live streams, you have made it clear you don't care about locals getting harassed by their neighbors, about landlords screwing over their tenants, and you don't care about the, the local disabled community. Not everyone belongs here, but keep patting yourselves on the back for making yourselves think that. And then we'll close public discussion. And it moves us to the consent agenda, one through 12. Council? Um, I'd like to move for approval of consent agenda, but I would also like to pull consent agenda item six for a discussion. Support. The uh, land, wait, is this the land? Did I pull the right That's one? That's the right one. Okay. Any Support. other? All right, let's go to item six. All right, I, um, I had a phone call earlier with uh, Ed Klobuchar, and I just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page on this one. Yes, we are, and uh, this is a combination, so it should make it combined. more. Yeah. It should make it more uh, spacious and less problematic if we combine it. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Absolutely. I had uh, James up. And, okay. Uh, well, because there was a uh, there was some questioning about if this. I wanted to make sure this was a combination and not a, a splitting split. of the parcel, um, because um, I frequent Berkeley a lot for work, and they've been having some issues with um, smaller lot size there and accessibility for well, the houses. The that gentleman's are there, getting so. ready to sell the property. I, I live right behind. Him. Perfect. I just want to make sure we were all on the same page, and there was some commentation. He just never got around to joining it. Perfect. Yeah, this will this will actually. Two years ago, he bought the lot. And I, I did share some of those pictures with James from the issues in the other community where it's too tight to get a car into a garage. Wonderful. So we want to make sure we avoid that with any future plans at HP. Awesome. That's, so that's my only comment. So uh, I want make sure. I uh, have uh, one bit of prerogative on this too, please. Uh, on the consent agenda is the uh, uh, confirmation of the appointment of the new fire chief. Right. Chief Story, if you could bring Captain Tom Walker to the uh, podium and uh, introduce him, please. Evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Hi. Uh, I'd like to present Captain Tom Walker as uh, my replacement come November 1st when I uh, officially retire. Um, it's been a pleasure working here. I think he's going to take over and do a tremendous job, if not a better job than what I feel I did for, for the city. So, um, yeah. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Tom. Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. So. Go ahead, Tom. I just said it's an honor to serve the city as the next fire chief to follow in the current chief's footsteps. And I'm just honored and look forward to working with you guys. If there's anything I can do to help you guys, reach out to me at the fire department. We thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Yep. Nice to meet you. And uh, if I may, and I'm sure that I'll talk about this a little more next month, but uh, Chief Story, you did a fantastic job during your tenure here as fire chief. You took over right after the flood, and uh, we had firemen and secretaries and DPW and water workers and police officers throwing garbage into trucks that we had to rent because our own uh, trash pickup service at the time left us high and dry. And uh, Chief Story, that was one of the first things that he spearheaded, and uh, uh, he's been uh, an amazing fire chief ever since then. And I'll miss you 
I'll miss you every day because you were really good at what you do. So thank you thank very you. much, sir. It's been a pleasure serving yeah. you. You've been a great boss. And uh, Tom, uh, look forward to working with you. You gave us an outstanding interview and uh, basically gave us a, a book that uh, he prepared of things that he wants to do and work on, which I'll put in all of your LL packets this week. Uh, and I think you'll be as impressed with him as I was. Uh, the fire department has been in great hands. Chief Story has done a great job preparing the next generation of leadership. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with Tom uh, as well. And we're going to continue on doing great things for the city. So thank you, thank you both. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone here for Kids Caves Development Center for the new business license? Anyone here for the uh, Fitz and Reed Mechanical? Yeah, business license. Anyone else have any comments about 1 through 12? Any uh, dissension? Yeah. 1 through 13. 13. 13. Sorry. 13. Over there on the back. <coughs> any dissension? Changes? No, sir. Motion passes. Takes us to the administrative report item 1, and only 1. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the administration recommends approval. Do you want a motion? And you can make the motion <laughs> if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the ordinance to amend the Hazel Park Municipal Code, Title VI, Animals, Chapter 6.04, Animals and Others, to add Article 5, 4, 5, uh, retail pet store sales as follows on the second reading. Support. Any um, other discussion, comments? Dissension? My only comment is that I want to thank um, I want to thank everybody on this council um, for supporting this and for um, having great discussion on this. I also want to thank our city attorney for her quick turnaround and um, approving the language that I'd sent over uh, very hastily um, after working on it for so long. I also um, want to thank Andy Kozlowski for the front page article about our pet store ban ordinance, and um, again for the support from our um, original motion and um, all of the people that helped bring this to our community and helped um, get the language correct. And uh, at the MML conference, I was able to introduce this to some other community leaders. So I'm hoping to see this um, spread a little bit further through Oakland County. Um, and, uh, and that's it. I think it's really fitting that it's happening during our uh, Puppy Ban Awareness Month as well. So very proud of our community. Uh all of that, uh, plus, uh, once again, would like to recognize Tiffany Perkins. Um, I know that this was on uh, Council Ma or, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan's radar. This was not on my radar until uh, you and your uh, friends started uh, infiltrating my inbox. So thank you for your advocacy and for your passion on this subject. Absolutely. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, no dissension. Motion passes. Uh, boards and commissions, I see one here for an appointment to the Planning Commission. Yes, could you please uh, make that appointment? Is that uh, Hanson? So move. Uh, take any other boards commission. We're going to postpone the beautification yeah, funds. Yeah, so probably next month. For a so clarification of right. uh, a few things, and then we'll do some appointments next month. Sounds great. Okay? Wonderful. And I want to say thank you to the beautification committee for coming out and doing a wonderful presentation, and it was proud to see you all. Thank you. And it takes us to the old business. Any old business, anyone? New business? Um, I have a new business. Um, I also had an, another discussion this afternoon with uh, Ed Klobuchar about the Trunk or Treat this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be doing Trunk or Treat this year. Our wonderful partners at City Edge Church uh, are not going to be able to partner with us this year. So the City of Hazel Park is taking this over. So we're asking for any help, volunteers, reminding folks if you'd like to participate, please, please buy a few bags of candy, bring your car over, uh, park it in the row at Scout Park. We're going to have Trunk and Treat this year, October 26th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So I'll need as much help as we can get from council, from employees, from boards and commissions. And uh, we're reaching out to some other uh, churches or community groups. Uh, in town, and hopefully we can uh, do as good a job as we've always done every year on this. So uh, if you're available, please, please, please reach out and uh, help us. We'd appreciate it very much. If you want to hand out candy and help out, please arrive an hour early. 
Yeah, at, so we can line everyone up. At least, at least, at least an hour. At least, yeah, I think forty minutes or so we can do it. But Still. it's better the earlier you get there, the better it is. So a lot of cars showing up at is one. Is there day. an email or phone number that people should use? To Contact the Hazel Park Recreation Department at two four eight five four seven five five three five, and uh, we'll post uh, uh, an email for that tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Facebook. Uh, communications from department heads. Hi. Um, I just wanted to step up uh, in recognition of uh, National Recovery Month and Suicide Prevention Month. Just to reaffirm um, that our officers uh, are all equipped with Narcan to help um, prevent the overdoses or to assist people. Um, as well as uh, through in the city, uh, John R. and East Mahan, you can find uh, Narcan there that's available for its use. And um, I also wanted to just add that Narcan is, I don't want it, it's not a bad rap. Um, you have people that uh, use prescription drugs properly, but they, maybe they misuse it or they overuse. They don't have any ill intentions. It's just, uh, you know, they, uh, they are trying to overcome their problems and they use too much. So with Narcan on hand, it can help save these people. So, um, you know, the, from the police department standpoint and perspective, um, there's also a Hope Not Handcuffs is available. People that um, uh, have uh, problems with uh, addiction, um, they can come to their police department if they need help. We can get them in touch with people. Um, so that's also available to them. Uh, just a side note, I was just taking a look at our 2023 and 2024 reports as it pertained to uh, overdoses. Uh, in 2024, or excuse me, 2023, we had uh, 24 runs. Um, we've decreased that now. Um, for this year, it's, we're down to 16 runs. Um, our Narcan use, we've had to use Narcan 15 times last year. This time, it's gone down, down to nine times. Um, as well as uh, uh, the unfortunate deaths due to overdoses, uh, they were at an all-time high of nine within the city, and uh, we're down to two uh, for this year. So that's, that's good. Um, I think it's uh, just getting the word out um, to get rid of that stigma. You know, if people need help, they can get it. And we're also here to help them as well. Uh, as it pertains to Suicide Awareness Month, again, I want to reemphasize um, that phone number, um, 988, if you need help, any type of help. If you're in distress, call 988. There's people on the other side to help you. Um, our police department, we respond to runs. Um, in 2023, we responded to 128 uh, mental health runs. Uh, we, this year, we've responded to 111. Um, those are 128 people, 111 people that we were able to help. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we can't help everyone. We had one uh, a, a suicide in 2023, and unfortunately, we've had 22 uh, uh, this year. So uh, one of the other things that uh, we're going to be touching base on is the police department in conjunction with uh, other departments also uh, is uh, joined with a co-responder program. Um, we're hoping uh, next council meeting we're going to bring them in uh, to introduce our co-responders to them, to you all. Um, they're really good people, and uh, it went into effect uh, September 3rd, uh, and they've already been an asset to us, and they've been helpful. So. I just wanted to make council aware of that. Um, so, and that's all I have. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Um, Thank you. While, you're, while you're up here, Chief, um, do we, can you also talk about the free gun locks that are available? Oh, very good, yeah. yes. Uh, and the med drops. And, and unfortunately, you know, uh, with suicides, uh, you know, there's a, a concern with the firearms. And we do have free gun locks. Uh, you can come into the police department, walk in, and we'll give you as many as you need. Uh, there's, 
you know, and if we, have, if we run out, we'll go find more and we'll get them to you. So make use of those gun locks and make sure your firearms are secured. Uh, you know, kids uh, can come and go and they're very inquisitive and they'll look around and we don't want them finding your firearm that's not secured. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any other department heads? Welcome back. Um, <laughs> our, it is, October is Fire Prevention Month. Mm -hmm. Our uh, annual open house is October 20th, 11 to 1. October 20th? Yes, sir. At the fire hall, cider donuts, a car extrication, apparatus display, bounce house, and more. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Does, does our fire department still give out free smoke detectors? Thank you. I had that thought in my head and I didn't think of it just now. Yes, um, please come up to the fire station. We give one smoke detector out per residence. Um, just show your ID when you walk in. Um, we'll help if, uh, install it if needed. Uh, we prefer you to install it, um, but if you're of, of need, we'll be more than happy to come and help out. And that's not just in October, that's year round. Yeah, year round, we always give them out. Yes, ma'am. Well, since you're here, Yes, we didn't talk about it on the consent agenda. Tell us a little about the fire truck. Yeah, it's a sore subject right now. Um, oh. We're in uh, contact with our dealer who is supposedly not getting answers from the manufacturer. Um, the foam system that was initially put in failed. They upgraded to a new foam system. From what I can gather through the middle of this muddy water is that that foam system's not installed yet. So uh, we were supposed to go this Friday. Uh, that is now on hold. Uh, we're waiting for our next communication. But it's being handled. It is being handled. It's 99% done. It's one of them I couldn't answer. I'd like to go up there just to talk to them personally. That would make me happy. So that's where it's at. All right. Thank you, Ty. Thank you. Yep. Any other department heads want to come up? But I'll hurry at once. Uh, City Attorney. No, Mr. Mayor, thank you. City Manager. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, it was great. Uh, we had uh, great representation at the Michigan Municipal League uh, Conference uh, last week, and we were able to learn a lot and get uh, go to the, the classes were actually good and relevant. Not that they're not always good and relevant, but this time they were particularly good and relevant. And uh, I think that we all we all learned a lot from those questions, those classes. And of course, Michigan system of municipal finance remains fundamentally broken. But we are working with them to look for some solutions. And they do have uh, some legislation that's been introduced, and uh, we're doing a little better with revenue sharing and things like that. And we're hopeful for some more uh, systemic uh, improvements. So, uh, also, is uh, is Shirley where Shirley at? Okay, she's still here. Uh, I just want to let uh, her know that her message was forwarded over to uh, Tom Jones, and uh, uh, I guess he did speak with her, and uh, uh, the contractor is going to look at her sidewalk, and they're in the process of getting those slabs resolved. So that is per the uh, DPW department text that I just got. So people do watch these meetings and pay attention. So uh, that solution is in progress. So uh, thank you, DPW, for keeping me uh, updated on this matter. Okay. Councilperson of Washington. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone that came out tonight, everyone in the audience, um, those doing civic announcements with Kathy, David, and Shirley. Um, I do thank you, Shirley, for coming to bring that to City Council um, because we do want to hear from our residents. And also, Charles and the Beautification Commission, I look forward to working with you in the future. I feel like I manifested this speaking to <laughs> Ed at uh, MML con convention last week. I wanted to get some monthly cleanups um, on the calendar next year, so 
look forward to me. Um, and then thank you, Tiffany, again, for bringing the puppy mill awareness. Um, Mike Flores, Hank, and Mal, uh, Mal, thank you again for always coming to speak to us. Um, and for your courage and conviction. And um, I want to just tell everyone to give their pets an extra big hug for me tonight, because I lost my pup on Saturday. And yeah, um, yeah, everyone just love your animals a little bit more. Uh, Charles, uh, thank you very much for sharing uh, your sort of uh, first person testimonial uh, about recovery and I figured I'd share mine. Um, I think uh, like most college students, uh, had you know, everybody around me has Adderall, has access to Adderall, uh, and it became sort of a, a means to an end to get a paper done at night and then to make it through class during the day and then to function and then pretty soon uh, you become an addict and I became an addict and I uh, was able to have a, a great um, you know, resources around me, great support system uh, and was able to, to kick that and now I like to think of myself as a relatively high functioning adult. So. Uh, we are all, uh, addicts are, are among you, people in recovery are among you, and it's just really, really important that we continue to talk about it, uh, especially considering there are 27.2 million people who are classified as having a drug disorder. So uh, if, like Charles and I, uh, you have or had a problem, uh, there exists resources, and I want to commend the Oakland Community Health Network for uh, presenting this resolution, but also for the myriad of resources that they have available. Uh, please visit their website, city website, to access any of those. Uh, on a happier note, uh, we are heading into an election. Uh, if you've managed to have your head in the sand or, and are unaware, I'm a little jealous, but uh, there are some important upcoming dates. So October 21st is the last day to register to vote by mail and online. And then after that, you do have the ability to register in person until November 5th, which is election day. So everyone, uh, including those who addressed us tonight and presented us with their best ad hominems, please exercise the franchise and please go vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Councilman McCarroll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanna thank Slasher Dave for coming out and speaking us, to us and letting us know about the Haunted Hazel Park Festival, Haunted Halloween. I'm going to be volunteering there. Please come out. If we are uh, a lot of fun, and hoping to make this uh, the first annual. Um, the resolutions on you know drug abuse and suicide, you know uh, the mental health issues and, and drug abuse go hand in hand. Often, it's so. I thank you for that. Um, it's something we touch on regularly at church. Um, it's. It's only in the last seems few years to become less stigmatized, <clears throat> more talked about. Um, so that's a good thing. And on that note, if you love somebody, tell them. If you have children, hug them every day and tell them you love them. And thank you to everybody for coming out and participating in the democratic process. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. <coughs> Um, I also want to thank everybody that came out today. I want to thank um, the people that are advocates for our community, advocates for things outside of our community. It is hard work, it is emotional work, and um, we appreciate you and we see you. Um, I also want to remind people and echo um, the sentiment of um, voting. You can visit vote.org um, to verify that you are registered, to register, to um, get information on polling locations. Um, also on our suicide um, prevention resolution, you can also, you don't have to just have to call 988, but you can also text 988. So if you are really struggling and maybe you, um, you, you don't feel up to speaking to somebody, but you need to talk to somebody, um, you can reach that. Um, that assistance through text. And um, I'm going to take over a little bit for Andrea and remind and ask um, that we publish the ERA. Thank you. She was busy this time, so. Yeah. I didn't cry, though. I didn't cry. I know. I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I thank everybody for coming out this evening. And uh, we had a lot to talk about, a lot of different uh, 
issues and a lot of things to discuss. Uh, suicide awareness is one of my other things that we've had, all had friends and family go through these. And we try to save as many as we can. And we've all lost, some of us have, our dear friends. And uh, we hope we don't lose any more. It's nice to hear the statistics come down after everything and all the awareness and the stigmatization being taken up and people actually listening to their neighbors and their friends that there is a tomorrow. Don't look at today all the time. It may not be what you want to see. Look towards the light, toward tomorrow, and look for a future. That's what a suicide need. People that want to commit suicide, they don't see tomorrow. And that's how I helped a few of my friends through, is helping them see the light. And we've all had experiences one way or another with a friend or a relative. And I want everybody to be safe coming up with all the events and everything. Uh, the weather's going to start changing, even though we've had this great summer and this great fall. And uh, let's all be aware that the weather will be coming up soon. And we want to make sure all our children and everybody's safe through the Halloween month. And, uh, and all the bike riders out there with all the leaves going to start falling. You've got to be wear your, wear your reflectors and everything because it's going to get a little dangerous with all the leaves starting to fall. And the light is getting, it's getting darker sooner, so I just wanted to make you aware. I do want to say thank you and welcome Thomas Walker one more time. And uh, we hope to have a great relationship. And any recommendation from Chief Story is a very high recommendation from this board. And, yep. and I want to say thank you to the police chief for making us aware of all the social programs once again at a time where people start to change the weather and change the climates when we all need it. And I greatly appreciate us getting the social program with the psychiatrists on board to come out and take up a crime scene where we otherwise would have a sometimes bad outcome. And we all know where that's been. And I want to say thank you one more time to everyone for coming out. Let's have a great, great fall. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mm. Move.